Black Bay Youth Zone was set up in 2011 and it's a 21st century youth club known as the Youth Zone. Recent research suggests that child poverty has increased by 100%, so almost doubled since the start of COVID-19. So I think the spotlight's been on Blackburn because of the COVID cases, but in addition to that, some of the concerns that are growing and increasing locally. The aim of the Citizens' Jury isn't to sugarcoat anything or write a script, it's actually to show raw footage and actually what's going on. What I think we're going to find is that young people are going to be extremely frustrated and actually those concerns and frustrations might come out. At the moment when we're going out and about talking to the young people, obviously the key um, subject is the fact that they're not at school. Quite a lot of them are struggling with anxiety, with mental health. Quite a lot of them don't understand what coronavirus is. The way adults are looking at young people, they're using them as a scapegoat for all the stuff that's gone on. Uh, and I think that's a really negative thing to put pressure on young people. How has coronavirus affected you recently? My mum lost her job because she's self-employed. And my grandma's just passed and I couldn't see it. Okay. What was your mum's job? She's self-employed financial advisor, financial advisor. So has she been able to apply for furlough or has she fell through the cracks? The com company wouldn't let her uh, get another job or get any money off government. You get stuck inside which makes the family aggressive because we can't stand like being in the house for so long and it's restricting. So for you, how do you get away from that then? What, what is your kind of release for that then, would you say? Headphones and music, that's music. it. Basically for me anyways, it's just over being away from friends, uh, friends and family for so long and haven't been able to see other people, like friends, families, brothers, sisters and all things like that. Oh, that's all. Okay. And some people walk outside over the COVID, they're scared of it. Has COVID-19 affected your parents at all, or your yeah. guardians? Kind yeah, of, kind yeah. of, yeah. yeah. Same, basically it's the same thing for our parents. Some people are not scared of it, like my grandfather, he's scared of it, he won't come over the house. Oh, he won't come out the house? So. No. So what they found is that they're wanting to come on the camera, they trust us and what they've been saying and when the cameras turn up they don't want to be on it because they're shy um, or they don't know what to say in front of the camera so it's like Catch-22 with them, you know, it's just how it is and it, it gets frustrating for us but not, and for them not to get their point of view but they've had told us these things and that's why we can still voice for them even though they're not here right now. common thing that we tend to find when we're out and about is that a lot of the young people don't believe any of the facts and figures that are being given to them. You know, a lot of it they think is an exaggeration, it isn't real, it's all a load of rubbish that they're telling them to get them to stop in. And we're trying to battle that. We're trying to tell them actually it's happening to real people. It's, it's real life, this, you know, it is quite scary. And getting that to be relatable to somebody who is a young person is really difficult, particularly when the media is kind of not portraying that towards their age range. How has then COVID-19 affected your life? So it's been a year now. Missed, uh, missed one year of education. Okay. Uh, been uh, feeling down. Down. Sometimes losing it as well. It's not good for anyone's mental well-being, uh, not, not being in and around these type of establishments. What's your opinion when you're seeing young people about on the streets? If they're minding their own business, you know, so be it. But, you know, we have got a few problems around here with kids vandalising stuff. Um, what is there to do? You know, where, where can they go? What can they do? I think the reality is, is that, yes, while COVID is very real and young people should be staying indoors, Actually, when you consider what indoors means for a lot of young people, uh, it's not what, what you think. Uh, for such, some young people, homes are extremely toxic. So to ask them to stay indoors at this point actually isn't best for them. So naturally, young people having the instincts that they do, they revert to being outdoors uh, and then um, obviously not cooperating. And then the message will be again for those young people to return indoors, which is extremely conflicting. We 
want to introduce FAS to the young people so that they get to see somebody who's genuine, who's local, who's uh, been impacted by COVID. FAS herself works as a youth worker and a teacher, so she knows what young people are like, she knows um, you know, how they've been impacted by COVID themselves. And I think it's really beneficial for the young people to get the opportunity to speak to somebody like FAS who's real and in front of them. This whole COVID-19 came out um, I genuinely didn't think that we'd be affected by it I just thought oh it's only gonna be around for a very short time and literally the week we were celebrating my brother getting married you know we were all so happy but it was that week that my grandparents both tested positive anyways it got to the Friday and my grandma was really struggling and she really couldn't breathe at all she went into hospital she got diagnosed with pneumonia so yes yeah, so we got the news that she'd you know, unfortunately passed away, but it was quite comforting to know that she actually passed away in peace despite being in hospital. Brandon's still upset, but he was just really, really kind of weak in himself. And we just thought, obviously he's got COVID, he's not feeling so well, he's having to deal with the shock of my grandma passing. So then the day after, they took him into hospital and I would probably say within 20 minutes, we got a phone call saying he'd passed away as well. It was really, really interesting last night. I mean, unfortunately, some of them didn't want to be on camera again, as I've mentioned previously. Um, that's just the nature of young people. But a lot of them did listen in the background. You know, a lot of them were a bit further out from the camera, so you couldn't see them on camera. And they were still listening to everything that Faz was saying. And the impact afterwards, the session that we came back to, again, as much as we don't want to scare them, it was a different vibe. You know, it was as if they'd all been told something that actually had hit them a little bit. You know, it hit them and made them realise that this is real and, you know, we are going through quite a scary time. Everything that we do is to respond to young people's needs. Uh, so the idea is when a young person comes through the front door, actually we've got something for them, whether that's advice, guidance or an activity. And it's crucial at this point, especially when COVID has been and then once it's gone, it's really important that we, we continue to do that because young people are still going to be in search of who they are as a person, what is the next steps in their life. Um, and a lot of these young people have been tarnished by the tagline COVID generation. Uh, so we're, we're still unknown, unknown what the long term impacts on young people, but for our service and staying true to young people's needs, hopefully we can adapt and ensure that young people can progress. Music